Glory to Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My brethren, peace of the Lord. I invite everyone to stand up. I don't think that we don't even need a message, right? Everybody's in this spirit here. That's great. But today we're going to have two messages just to help out. We're going to begin tonight to introduce. What is, where's my list, Fabio? It's next to the flower. Okay, here it is. What a surprise, huh? Tonight we're going to introduce our little brother, Brito. I invite parents, our sister Bettina, our brother Wesley, Brian's brother Daniel, and the uh, grandmother from the mother's side, Maria, to be here in front. It's a great joy to be a part of this act. It's a prophetic act. It's a biblical action, biblical act, and it's a confirmation of what we are seeing here for 2,000 years, for more than 2,000 years. You're going to read in Luke, Luke 2, Luke 2, to 21 says, and twenty-one. And when eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now, when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses were completed they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord the only instruction the Lord gave to us regarding our children is to introduce them to the Lord there's no other teaching regarding baptism with the children they will really be baptized like like we have seen this morning, youth, youth with 15 years old, they already have the knowledge. They already have, they know what is right and wrong. And when them, when they themselves choose to serve the Lord, it's their choice. It's not the decision of the parents. Even though the parents would want it, even though the church would want to see our children being baptized, but it, it is at the right time. It is when they feel in their hearts the touch of the Holy Spirit. It's when they feel in, in their hearts the need to choose the Lord as the only God of their lives. That's when Brian is going to be baptized. But today he was just being, is going to be introduced to the church. What the the Lord had given to this family. They are now going to place him in the altar of the Lord so that the Lord may take care of him his entire life, from his birth, from the gestation, all the way to the day when he goes to heaven. We're going to do this right now. We're going to pray for him with great joy. We as a church have a great responsibility to pray for Brian, to pray for the parents, the parents also have a great responsibility of guiding Brian in the presence of the Lord, learning the mysteries of God, learning how good it is to serve this God, teaching on the Word, the commitment of bringing him to Sunday school, which is very important. When our children, when they, they begin to hear the Word of God, because the Word is truth. 
the, the word delivers and you know the truth and the truth shall set you free and Brian was already born in a Christian home a home that was delivered by God blessed be the name of the Lord now Brian is going to learn lots of things of what the Lord has for his life to our lives I mean, generally speaking amen That's great. Look. Let us close our eyes. Go to Jesus. Amen, O oh God. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. O oh God, we glorify your name for the life of Brian, for the promise that was fulfilled in, in, the fam in this family. And we praise you because we know that you took care of everything. And now we ask, Lord, as we introduce him to you, we ask that you we continue with your powerful hands, taking care of his life, teaching him to serve you, teaching him so, ha so that he may be victorious in obedience to your word and that they may, he may grow in knowledge. Uh, the human knowledge as well as the spiritual knowledge so that he may be a blessing whatever he pass by whatever and it might it be in his house or in the church and that he may be a, a carrier of salvation Jesus is a prayer that we say in thanks thankfully to you in the name of Jesus amen amen he, he behaved very well <laughs> release my tongue so we're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord Amen. I ask you Lord take this child on your arms don't don't ever separate from her from this child Lord protect this child we praise the Lord because many there are out there, they don't have this privilege, Lord, of being in your presence, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this blessing, for this parent, and for our church. We praise you, therefore, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to Jesus. The family can now go back. Glory to God. My brethren, the greatest joy for church and for the parents is to see their children in the presence of the Lord. There's nothing, there's no, nothing, it is priceless. There's nothing in this world that can bring this joy to a, a father or a mother and to us brethren in Christ. We see our children growing in the Lord, being baptized in the Lord. This is very good, it's very gratifying. Let us open our Bible once again in Second Kings. Second Kings, chapter six, from verse fourteen. Second Kings, six fourteen. Amen. Therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army there. And they came by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. 
Glory to Jesus. The brethren can sit down. My brethren, we have seen here a situation that involves the nation of Israel. We'll see here the prophet Elisha, a man who was the successor of the prophet, prophet Elijah. He was the helper of the prophet Elijah. In Elisha, he saw many things that God did through the prophet Elijah. In Elisha, he was became aware of an, a work that God was doing, and he saw miracles. He saw signs and saw wonders. He saw cures, and he embraced this work of the Spirit. And he understood this work of the Spirit. And nothing, no one could get him confused. Because he under, understood it in depth. When he saw the God of Israel, he made himself available so he could be used as a vessel in the hands of the Lord. And once Elijah said, Elisha, stay here, I'm going to such and such city. Stay here, I'm going there alone and later we meet. And he said, no, no way. No one who separates. But I'm going to another city and you go with me and you say, and no, and he said, no, I'm going with you. Elisha was a man that had a definition in the Lord. And was a man had was had his mindset on being a vessel in the hands of the Lord, and now the prophet Elijah was taken up by the Lord. He was raptured, and now Elisha takes over the ministry of Elijah. God begins to use Elisha with great power. Ask the Lord, give me double portion. He is not. He's not dumb. He asks, he want a lot. You want God to do more through my life. I want to dedicate myself more. I want to do more. And now Elisha, he begins to be used by God. And once again, the work of God is demonstrated in Israel through the signs and the name of the Lord is glorified. The God of Israel becomes a God known amongst the nations, a feared God, not because he's fury, but because he was a true God, because he was a God of love, because he was a God that took care of his people, because he was a God that never looks to the man's imperfections, but because he was a God above all gods. This is our God. And now Elisha becomes a vassal. In the other nations, they rise up against Israel. And here, the king of Syria set up, sets up a trap. He surrounds a city. He sends horses, he sends his army, and now the city is surrounded by many soldiers, warriors, and that was a tactic of war. He surrounded the city, preventing anybody from entering and leaving the city. Whoever tried to enter and leave the city was killed, and the city was surrounded by days, weeks, months sometimes so that they, in this siege, they could cause fear, frustration, and disappointment, and terror. So people, they stay there desperate, without food, without water. At the moment, the army would attack. Are we going to die today? Are we going to die tomorrow? 
we were going to wake up, when are we going to be attacked? The siege served this purpose. And sometimes they stay like this for weeks. And now we see the helper of Elisha. When he sees that situation, he sees the city surrounded, he sees the soldiers, he sees the horses, the warriors, and he sees that early in the morning, he wakes up worried, and then he turns to Elisha and says, My Lord, what are we going to do? What can we do? And my brethren, we live in a world where the enemy of our souls has surrounded men. He has surrounded the cities. He has surrounded the families. This month, we have been praying for the families because there are families in this situation just described. They are, have been surrounded, they are, have been terrorized by evil, they have been terrorized by this operation of evil that exists over the world. It's a war. People taking their lives uh, away. If this week, if you look at, and on the newspapers, you see people that call themselves famous, they're well known. With a life, and we look from outside, we even envy that person. This guy travels all over the world. People well known, famous, they're prosperous in life. Yeah, young people taking their lives away, youth taking their lives away. Why? Because the enemy is surrounding people, preventing their contact with the outside, preventing the access, there is nothing, there is no communication, there is no, there is nothing uh, between people, there is a complete isolation, there is terrorism, it is an action of the enemy of our souls, families are living like this, in this way, now we see a city, imagine how many families were here desperate. And now, the man of Elisha, a young man, a helper of Elisha, looking at the situation, fear took hold of his heart. And the answer of Elisha, Eli and the question of the young man was, what are you going to do? And there are people there are in this situation. What am I going to do? What am I going to do with my life? How am I going to help my family? Am I going to help my, my son who is ad in addiction? How am I going to help my wife? How am I going to help myself? What to do? And every day that passes by, evil is victorious. Every time the day passes by, the enemy is victorious. Because when you look, to a home and see a, a, a son uh, trapped by addictions, it is because that home, because that in that trial, the family was defeated by the enemy. When we see a home where the enemy of our souls is having access, he see the he sees the gaps, he sees he sees the opportunity, he sees an open door, and he enters. And there, they are being defeated. Women, men, youth, elderly, they are being defeated. Because, because they are in this situation without being able to go back or uh, to the front or go back. They don't have food, they have nothing, spiritually speaking. There's no solution. What to do? And now Elisha gives the answer. Elisha, when he sees the young man in that situation, said, Fear not. Don't be afraid because more are the ones who are with us than the ones who are with them. My brother, this is the answer of the church. This is the answer of the faithful servant. This is the, this, the answer of the 
the servant who has made a definition God, the servant who has understood this project, project of salvation of man. Fear not. Greater are the ones who are amongst us and the ones that are with them. My brother, that's what the Lord has for you tonight. If you enter here with this doubt, if you enter here asking, what am I going to do with my life? The answer that we have for you, the answer that came from God tonight is, do not be afraid. Greater are the ones, is the number of those who are with us than the ones with, there are with him, with them. Rest in the Lord. What we need, you need is to make a definition in the presence of the Lord. You need to leave the things of the world. You need to uh, leave things that, that the world offers and go away from the trap that the enemy is setting up for you. And you need, lead, need to leave all of this behind. And you need to go deeper in this project that God has for your life, which is the eternal gospel. Not the scope that we see out, out there, a gospel that you can do every, everything, everything is allowed. No, God is love. God is justice. God is judgment. If you make a definition of the Lord, God will be with you. If you are warm, if you are undecided, one, one time you are in sin and the other in the blessing, if you have not made a definition of Jesus, you will only see what this young man is saying. You will only see the trials. You will only see the difficulties. You will only see what the enemy of our souls has placed ahead of us. And that's what man, away from the Lord, that's what man sees. Only the difficulty, only the weight. Man sometimes creates in his mind an illusion, creates a fear. Isn't it true? Sometimes they don't have any of it. There's nothing. Man just needs to give worth to the salvation of Jesus. Man just needs to surrender themselves to Jesus, give worth to the Word of God. Man just needs to live according to the Word of God, how the Word of God has taught us. From the day in which he begins to live in this way, Man will have the same vision that Elisha had. Do not be afraid. Greater are the ones who are who are with us than the ones who, who are with them. Two visions of two Christians. Two visions of two men of God. Prophet Elisha, a man that had made a definition, and a man who was following Elisha. This is the problem of those who just follow it. Sometimes we see inside of the church, homes, going through trials, servants, men, women, going through very difficult, great difficulties, infirmity, nothing works out, he tries here and there, goes back and forth. We pray, the group prays, the church prays, God blesses here, and then later on there's another trial, here is victorious on this, and you know, as soon as he is victorious in one trial, there are two or three more. Then you look at a person and you see, you come to the church and think, will this brother be here? And then you see the brother didn't come to the church. Then you, then the praise group goes and makes a visit and is this person is, is sick in the Lord? Is this family sick in the Lord? Is the Lord doing what? Uh, are they doing what the Lord has instructed? No. Everything is difficult. Nobody has reason to leave. These people let themselves be carried away by the trials, but they don't do what the Lord is saying. To fast, to pray, service at home, early dawns, reading of the Word. They don't take possession of these spiritual weapons. They want to be victorious, but they don't know how to take possession of the spiritual weapons that the Lord has given us. Prayer is everything for us. Glorification to the Lord is what you say, Lord, I'm thankful for the blessings received. I'm thankful for the trials, Lord. 
So then another service comes, they don't show up, they just vanish from the church, they're Christians. They carry the Bible, they're from Maranatha, they're this and there. But they are not, they have not made a definition of the Lord. They are not people that have made definition in Jesus. They're just followers, people that only carry a name of an, a human institution. But they have not made a definition in Jesus. They have not had an experience of salvation in Jesus. No matter the more we pray, no matter how much we pray for them, if you do not make a, a definition like Elisha did, uh, oh, I need to go to the city and then, and then uh, you leave here. No, no, Elijah. I want this blessing. I want the blessing of God in my life. No matter how much we uh, persist, if you not, if you do not make a, take a position in the presence of the Lord, if you do not leave the tiredness and and dive into this salvation, in Jesus, my brother and sister, you will only see the siege of the enemy. You will only see the siege of the enemy, the horses, the warriors the horse, the carriages, because the enemy does that, because there is a spiritual battle. There is a battle in which the enemy is being victorious inside of a, a house, a home of the, the, which is weak, of people that have a spiritual life that is weak. If you, if you don't pray, if you don't fast, if you don't take hold of your call, you will be like this young man here. How am I going to do? How am I going to be victorious? And Elisha, when he saw the situation of that young man, he said, Lord, have mercy. Open the eyes of this young man. Open the eyes of this young man, Lord, so that he may be able to see. And the Lord opened his eyes and he saw a mount filled with uh, uh, horses and church of fire the enemy was surrounding the city isn't it true the city was surrounded but the church of fire were surrounding Elijah Elisha you know why because it's spiritual the person who is spiritual sees what is spiritual the commitment of God is with the person who is spiritual the commitment of God is with you from the moment in which you look at the Lord and say, Lord, I want to be faithful to you. So then your eyes are going to be opened. And you see the chairs of fire that are around you. You see that your house is being surrounded by the blessing of God, by the angels of God with swords. You see that your home, your children, the Lord is protecting them. Because the promise of God is for the faithful. And if you want tonight to see the angels of the Lord, if you want to see the blessing of God that is at your disposal, you need to pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy on me. Open, my, open up my eyes. Teach me, Lord, how to be faithful to you. Don't let me, don't allow me to be carried away by tiredness or TV or because I'm, I'm sorry for my children because oh 10 o'clock in the morning I'm going to have to take them wake them up on Sunday to take them to Sunday school but the greatest blessing in the home is when the children are raised in, in the gospel because these parents they have peace they have rest they know that the Lord is taking care of their children the greatest concern of a father and mother is not having news about their child who is a father or mother knows that. Where's my son or my daughter? One o'clock in the morning, they didn't arrive. You call them, nobody answers. Sometimes the, the father sleeps and the mother doesn't. It's this child, it's like this. Until you have news, until the, the child has not arrived, the mother doesn't sleep. But if you want to leave, have peace and rest, you have, want to have victory in your home, make a definition of the Lord choose to serve the Lord. Do not be just a follower. 
Do not be a helper. Do not be. Try to serve the Lord. Make a definition of the Lord. Don't waste time. You know why? Because the, what the Lord has for us is a vision the Lord has shown here. It's a city illuminated with the gates of gold and a, a light. It's a city of filled with jewels and gold where we were being just a few steps from arriving on the city. There are people that fight, 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 and when it's time for them to get to heaven, they lose their blessing and do not it, lose the, the chance of being saved. We are very close to the arrival of Jesus, my brethren. Jesus at the gates. Whatever, all the pro prophecies that needed to be fulfilled are fulfilled. Almost all the prophecies have been fulfilled. Now there is only the voice of the Father ordaining His Son to come to take His bride. Don't waste your time with foolishness, with arguments. Don't waste your time with things of this life. Look to, to God. Don't give worth to the trial or, or the weight that is on your feet and you think it is a weight. Let go of it. Don't waste time with it. Look and you will see horses and chariots of fire around you. Amen. Now we're going to sing a song. And at this moment you pray to the Lord and say, ask, Lord, open up my eyes. Oh, Lord, may I be able to be more spiritual and that I may be able to see your glory and that I may be able to see your angels ministering on my behalf, ministering on behalf of my family. I miss you on behalf of what you have given me.
We're going to have a word of adoration to the Lord. Father, we glorify your holy name. Because we can see your glory in this place. For the great wonders we have operated amongst your people. We praise you because we have not lacked anything, Lord. We know that the enemy is surrounding our lives, but we are, I will not be afraid, Lord, because we have you, um, the Almighty God, that God can do all things, Lord. We glorify, Lord, because you see a good hand upon us, Lord, because we are fighting our cause, Lord. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. My brethren, the Lord has given a couple of spiritual gifts for the service, and in one of the visions, the, uh, the Lord has shown that at the door arrived a car, like a an Uber, or a big one, a lux luxurious one, an SUV, and this Uber left a passenger here at our door, and all of us came down from this car. But what is interesting that there is a woman, she remained inside of the car, afraid of leaving the car and entering here in this place. But the driver, the driver turned to this woman and said, you can go out without, without fear, do not be afraid. Here is your place. And the brother who saw this, he also saw the driver. The driver's look was like the eyes of Jesus. As a vision that needs to be understood spiritually. This car, it represents the project of God that takes men, that conducts men to leave this world towards a place that is reserved for the ones who are in the presence of God. The church here do not represent what is human, but the church represents what is spiritual. It's not that, that our church is the better church. It's not that your place is here in this church, but your place is 
in a uh, spiritual environment like this, where the Lord is present, where the Lord is speaking, where the Holy Spirit is visiting the hearts, where the chariots of fire are here. So that's why you, you have been brought to this spiritual environment. Because this is the spiritual environment that the Lord has for you. Nothing more or nothing less. And the Lord also has shown a man that this man sometimes in the way he is, he would harm people around him. But he was he didn't care about her hurting people around him. But tonight he was learning that a soul, a life is very precious to God. And it is the scene that he was even harming himself. He was harming people, but the one who was more hurt was himself. He doesn't understand this. That's why he is frustrated. That's why he was always defeated. But tonight, the Lord is giving him a deliverance. Because Jesus paid a very high price for each one of you who entered here tonight. For my life as well. Jesus paid a high price, a price of death, a price of blood, a price on the cross. No one had the courage, no one had the means to do this, but Jesus took this commitment so that you tonight could be here in the presence of this living God and you could say, I want my salvation. You know why? Because I believe in Jesus. Not because I'm good or because I'm rich, because I'm poor, because I'm ugly or beautiful, no. And it, I want my salvation, I want my salvation because what justifies me was the death of Jesus on that cross. It was not only a death, but on, not only his death, but on the third day, day, his resurrection. Because today, I can overcome death in Jesus. Amen? Let us stand up. May the Lord also bless your life in this way so that you may see what God has for you in the depth in absolute depth so you may not only see but you may accept and live this great blessing of God and life in man's life let's close our eyes Lord Jesus hallelujah Jesus holy holy is the name of God amen Glory to Jesus. Is there a song? Amen. Glory to Jesus.
I love you so hard. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Receive, Lord, our praise, our adoration. We're thankful for the spiritual feast that we took part in this weekend, Lord, for the service, for the prayers that have been made, for the answers to prayer that of the as we pray that have already been given. We praise you for the angels that are fi fighting on our behalf. We praise you for your love, for your mercy. We praise the Lord because we know that you are everything for us. We don't need anything else because your grace has been enough for us. Lord, we praise you for those who came down to the waters this morning, for the supper of the Lord that we have for the life that made a definition in the Lord, for the life that accepted Jesus as the only Savior of their lives. We praise the Lord, because here truly is our place, kneeling down in your presence and recognizing your power, recognizing that you are everything for us. Lord, take us home in peace, so that we may have a week of victories in your presence. Is a prayer that we say in the name of Jesus, in your name we say that the wonderful grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit, you pour out upon us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. We are here at the disposal. You are disposed to pray for those who desire. Just raise your hand. And we are going to go towards you. The pastor and the deacons, the church should remain in prayer.